Hello, welcome to Dwarven Forge Live. Uh, I'm Chris, and I've got uh, all of our sculpt well, most of our sculpting team here. Toby will be here in a few minutes. He's on the way in. Um, uh, kind of a fun stream today. Uh, we've got the sculptors here, uh, and you know you've seen them do the the deep dives where they talked about making uh, all those sculpts you were just seeing in the pre roll. Um, today. Uh, we're going to go through the sculpts and uh, talk about like what ideas we've got for the way that they can be used uh, in your games. Uh, that's both uh, war games, RPGs, uh, any of that stuff, whether it's monsters, traps, some sort of artifact. Uh, there's a lot of different things uh, these can be used for, and we've talked about them amongst ourselves pretty often. So we thought it'd be fun to just have a stream where we, uh, where we do that. Uh, at the same time, we're also uh, doing a, a promotion with Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms right now. You can see on the overlay, uh, we've got a code in there. You can put that in uh, on the game to get a free Electrum chest. Um, and with that, I believe, uh, let's get started. If you guys want to introduce yourselves real quick in case uh, somebody's here who hasn't seen you uh, in any of the other streams yet. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Nina and then we're, oh, or Eli, and we can work either way around. Hey, Eli. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, <laughs> Did you want any more than that? I mean, you know. You should say what you do. Yeah, interest. I, I guess you people know, but. Yeah, I mean, we're the sculpting team. We create most of the stuff that you buy. <laughs> and uh, we enjoy talking about it, and, and we're glad that you enjoy it. And um, I don't know, I mean. I could go on and on about myself, but that's probably not why you're here. It's partially why we're here, honestly. Uh, hey, if anyone has any questions about anything, you know, yeah. I'm happy to answer, but yeah. All right, Michelle. Hi, Michelle here, also a sculptor. I love doing all the tiny details that Nate will let me put into any of the pieces. Tiny being uh, doing a lot of heavy lifting, uh, I think. Uh, in that regard, when you see some of these elven sculpts. Uh, Nina? Hi, I'm Nina. Uh, I too am one of the sculptors. I'm sure you're surprised to hear that since we've said it three times. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm happy to be here talking about uh, reliquaries as terrain. Awesome. Um, I have no sculpting talent. I'm just going to be here to uh, move the pieces around and uh, help show what they're talking about. So why don't we go ahead and move over to the table and... Uh... Maybe one quick thing to add about all of us is that in addition to being sculptors, we are definitely all avid gamers. And so as we were making these things, we were definitely thinking about how we would use them in our games. Um, so cool. definitely. Into that a bit. All right. So we've got some stuff here uh, left from the stream before. Why don't we start with, uh, let's start with Eldritch, actually. Eldritch is a lot of fun. Uh, Nina, when you were making these, did you have any, like, particular ideas in mind? Like, was there anything that you well, thought, like, you'd really want to do in one of your games? Oh, definitely. Well, the, I think the main thing is that I was thinking that we don't actually have Eldritch terrain. Obviously, you could use a lot of the terrain that we do have with some uh, dressing from other places to do an Eldritch-themed campaign. Um, so I thought that these would be just like a great foray into that sort of idea. And I wanted these pieces to have like elements of life in them so that you could sort of uh, use them as a creature or something they have to fight, like... Uh, two of them, the the writhing monument, which Eli can talk about, and the um, grasping abomination. I forget what what is that one called. Devouring, devouring abomination. I think. Devouring abomination. Um, th those I feel like we should create some stats for. I feel like I could see a party. Uh, they have an objective that's on top of the uh, writhing monument or the the devouring aberration has like has taken something and they have to actually fight it um for the the hero that too is like it, it's definitely a creature like it, it it has it has eyes it has like tentacles it's like something that could very obviously um whether it's stays attached to the pillar or um in your game you can 
say like, you know, give it movement, give it stats, give it abilities, which again, we ought to like come up with a sheet for. I'm actually, I'm entirely on board with us making like a, a bestiary for these pieces that just has like ideas for each sculpt. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, definitely. I haven't actually tried putting the Raven Orb in these yet. And like, this could definitely work as like, I feel like they've got kind of enough of a dark energy to them that like, that crystal thing from, uh, was it Caverns Deep looks looks great on these. Is it like mm. the like the purple? The crystal? chained it was a chained crystal that oh, we that yeah. was part of our Caverns Deep sets. Mm. I think Michelle's got the Michelle. Anyway, yeah. it, it's it's a great objective and it goes perfect with these. Um, I could also see some of the I made some some sacrificial bowl stuff for the Shrine of Skiss Rissa also in Caverns Deep. I could see that being used in some sort of eldritch ritual. So it was like a little a little bowl with a knife and a heart and some other arcane nonsense. Um, yeah. And those would also work well on the top of this. Uh, I thought we had some of them in here. I think they got moved. Uh, we, had, we, we definitely blood bowl really before. would work. What was that? The blood bowl that that went in the first encounter. You almost expect the bowls on top of these to be filled with blood, like entire, like whole baths of blood. Yeah. I, I imagine, I imagine that um, it'd be really fun if you had multiples of the Eldritch stuff to uh, have only one of them that's actually creature and the rest of them are just statues, carvings and uh, so the players don't know one of them's going to animate <laughs> until oh, that would be a good place for an alternate paint scheme. Like you could you could have one that's painted as though it's stone, and then swap it out for the one that's uh, with the hamster's paint scheme. And be like, okay, well, when you approached it or you you said the the wrong words, you failed at solving the puzzle. It animates like the ultimate evil caryatid instead of it just, you know, <laughs> being a, a statue. It's, yeah, I mean, and it would be pretty easy for um, people to, to put a stone or a bronze paint scheme on one of these if they wanted to, to tweak it that way um, and then leave the, the original as the, the animated version. I yeah. Actually, that, that's my thing is, as far as like making stats go, do you think like, obviously we should have each of them with their own stats just in case, but like, is there like, of, of is is it valid to say like hey you can have like this and these two pillars out and then a couple of these pop up now and then and have them all be one monster and like it's just spreading around oh like... well yeah that yeah. it's all like tentacles from the same creature yeah uh, or like, when, or like when it's I... burrowing into the ground here or something and then coming up in other places well the way it's sculpted it definitely looks like it's coming up out of the ground for a lot of these. Um, but part of the way I was thinking about this um, originally, like maybe this sounds silly, but I was kind of thinking of it like a Pokemon that's evolving. <laughs> <laughs> and it starts out as um, the devouring apparition, and then it gets like a little bit more powerful. It starts like overtaking uh, the architecture. It turns into the writhing monument and then sprouts wings and it's the radiant horror. Uh, somebody, somebody in chat brought up a really good point that uh, technically any terrain can be eldritch that just hasn't uh, burst out yet. <laughs> That's true. True. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can totally run like, say, a Call of Cthulhu uh, campaign using, you know, ordinary city builder and dungeon terrain, whatever, and then just have one of these things pop up there. You know, because part of what makes a lot of the kind of Lovecraftian stuff creepy is it occurs in what is an otherwise ordinary world. And then you just go around a corner and something's there that is very, very wrong. Um, one one idea that I like for any of these really is, is having it as sort of a, like a test of worthiness of by an evil mm. cult. Like, you know, say, say the PCs try to infiltrate some evil cult and the cult leader's like, very well, then you must come in here and stand in the tub of blood on top of this, you know, and, and any evil creature that goes there, it just, you know, it just sits there. Maybe the tentacle just like strokes them kindly on the, on the forehead or whatever. <laughs> but if any, any good aligned creature goes there, it immediately tears them to shreds. So they have to decide, you know, when they blow their cover as they're being herded toward this 
this point of no return. That's pretty sick. <laughs> I like that idea a lot. I also like your vampire voice. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. It's my normal voice. I just usually concede it. Uh, someone in chat was saying that they really love these pieces but can't afford them. Uh, we are going to be doing a giveaway uh, during the stream, probably in about 20 minutes, uh, giving away $50 of credit for the pledge manager for this. So that's uh, almost the entirety of one of these heroes, and it's m enough to uh, for most of the payment of getting two of uh, the smaller pieces. So uh, if you want a chance for that, just stick around. Uh, in a little bit, we'll be doing a giveaway for some credit for that. Um, yeah. You know the fun thing about this top, the the topper for Eldritch is like with this being like its own little eye thing, you could have this like pop up like around the field pretty easily. Uh, oh, I didn't know we had shown those yet. We have. I think we've shown everything Surprise. except for the elemental one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that thing is definitely a creature. It's like I literally, it, it's a parasite. It's something that you know is is ancient and dormant and it's just sitting there on that orb on one of these altars and if, if the players like pass near it or do something incorrectly or fail their test like how eli was suggesting that thing would latch on to them sort of mind control them or maybe even suck their energy out or like give them visions of madness there's just so many ways that that thing could be used yeah it has kind of like a head crab effect like it like it throws yeah. itself onto people mm -hmm. Yeah, these things are totally like, you know, laying their eggs inside of you and taking <laughs> over your mind with little things clinging to the back of your neck and so on. And this yeah. is what and this is what you turn into when it when it bursts. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of incubate for a few days, devouring your, your neighbor that you know. Very aliens. Yeah. yeah. Well on the on the pillar in this one, there's the bit that Eli put in. That literally very much looks like it yeah. right off and, and, and then catch it so oh. <laughs> oh let's see um what else we got oh when Sophie gets here we'll have extra hands it'll be easier to grab things um I, I can also imagine a very interesting encounter where you you have to go to some, you know, maybe it's the far realm or something, and you know, kind of parley with uh, some eldritch being, which is not is not necessarily out to get you from the start, but you have to first like figure out what it wants, maybe even how to communicate with it before. So it maybe its to... motives are like inconceivable to you and just inexplicable. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, maybe if you say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, it'll just, you know, hit you with an eye beam and dissolve you. But maybe it will give you some weird boon, you know, like your skin gets all warty and, you know, you, you grow a third eye, but you also get, you know, a 20 strength and a 20 constitution or something. Yeah, who knows? Uh, yeah. I could see the, the Radiant Horror being benevolent. I feel like yeah, it could grant. Like it, it shows up, it screams, "Be not afraid!" in your face, and yeah. it zaps you, and you suddenly have like some sort of boon. Yeah, that could be the that could be like a fun. Spring cookies. Hmm? Yeah, that could be like a really fun take, right? <laughs> well, it maybe it has an agenda. Let's see. Maybe it has an agenda, and it's it's an enemy of some other enemy of yours, you know. It's, you know, just like the demons and the devils are at each other's throats. Right, well, right. Likewise. Enemy is it, my enemy is my friend sort of yeah. situation. So maybe it just happens to really hate Demogorgon or really hate Asmodeus or whatever. I could see it like having a personal beef with a beholder. Yeah, yeah, definitely they seem... Or a mind like, player. Mm -hmm. I could see some personal vendettas yeah. occurring there. How dare that elder brain try to, you know, take yeah. my... <laughs> my laboratory spawn, you know. Either way, definitely, it definitely <laughs> seems like a high level, like or high CR manifestation, whichever way you take it. Yeah, like, I don't think like you want to meet the same stuff. level one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, let's go to. Hmm. For those not not that I generally advocate playing evil characters, but for those who do, this could be like your your patron, your your dungeon master that 
gives you instructions on what to go do next. You know, well, you, you if, if you're a warlock, you don't have to be evil yeah. to make deals with the eldritch beings. That's like, true. You just a just... little sketchy. Yeah. Not actually evil. <laughs> I guess it's the thing, right? Like, that, that, like that's that's morally kind of interesting. If you, uh, mm. like, like, you're trying to toe the line between, like, you really need this guy's power, but, like, you know he's not really, not really, like, a good dude. Yeah, well, like, like Ford with Ukatoa on Critical Role Season 2, like, for a long time he used the power and then ultimately rebelled against it, and there was the whole... That was one of my favorite sequences in, in, the, in the campaign. Uh, that's definitely always... An in, there's always an interesting moral tension. Yeah. Let's move on to Elven a bit. Uh, these probably aren't creatures, yeah? <laughs> no, not really. I think they're ancient devices that... Uh, the elves created and left. Um, I really wanted to be able to expand on the ruins, but we wanted something that could go indoors rather than um, out in the wilds. So these were protected by from the elements with magic. These are definitely, um, like, the points of interest in the build, right? Like, if you're going through these runes, like, these are these are where you want to draw the uh, player's attention to. Um, maybe you've got a, an ancient seed of a long-lost magical plant that you have to bring uh, and charge it with life energy or something. Um They just, they scream magic. Yeah. Yeah, they're That's definitely a very place of power sort of thing. Like anything you put on them it suddenly becomes more magical or becomes an objective. Well, and then the, the artifact we have for it itself, like, is it, this is supposed to be Wyverstone in the thing or? No, it's just a crystal. Okay. Or, actually, now I don't remember. I think it's just a crystal, though. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's definitely just a crystal. <laughs> it doesn't have the, the texture of the wyvern stone. We went through so many different iterations of all these things as we were developing them that some things changed material along the way. The, yeah, this one changed a lot since I had originally wanted it more plant-like. And... Okay, yeah. um, Flight of Wyvern says, I like the idea of these being magically solidified memories that could change things up in a major way if anyone can ever activate them. That sounds cool. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. That sounds very Write cool. That, down. <laughs> that actually would be really Good oh. idea. <laughs> I'm going to use that. You could literally... Thank you. You could literally... Yeah, so this is like the ruins of a civilization and there's some kind of like... Yeah, you're trying to like activate the power you have to get to these points and then like the fight is not just... It could be like endless waves of enemies until you're able to reach the these objectives and uh, whether it's activating like a field or the, the memories or something. Um, you could even, you could have these and the Eldritch on the field at the same time and it could be some sort of abomination or some sort of Eldritch God like trying to take the power in these runes for itself even. And like- With, yeah, with the, with the fragmentary ones that are held by the, cre the elders creatures being things that were originally elvish as well. I mean, they don't quite look the same, of course, but they may have been corrupted by the touch of the things where they, they shed their, their elven glory and became just kind of twisted mockeries of the monuments of the elves. <clears throat> yeah. And they could be like bursting up all over the field, like grasping at you, trying to stop you from reaching the, uh, the objectives. Yeah. I could see those also tying in with the dwarven stuff. You could do the same the same thing with the or with dwarven. Hmm. Um. So, with this piece, were you picturing? Uh, what were you picturing this primarily as being? Like with this, like it does feel like like this one. I feel the the plinth gets uh, treated like a like a. Wow, what's the word? Like 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 a brazier, like Bra pretty often. 
which I think makes a lot of sense. Like it does, it does seem like the flames like feel so natural uh, on top of this. Um, were you were you picturing this being a thing that like minis could step on or being like something that held an object? I was thinking that is definitely sub protecting the object that's in uh, that it's focusing that energy to keep it safe, um, which would be something that the players would have to, to shut off or breach in some way to, to remove the MacGuffin that's in it. So there's some sort of protective ward around this thing. And if you had, you know, three or the three or four of them, you have to break all four in order to enter a chamber or uh, oh. you need to power them up in order to protect the city. Flight of Wyverns is saying that uh, this, this idea, like you can, you can give them, uh, you can take inspiration from like the story around the base of the, of the hero uh, to yeah. kind of explain like, like, maybe like these, these objects like played a role in that story in some fashion. Um, and it kind of mirrors the events there. At least that's what they're that's what they're saying. With uh, I guess that's what they're saying is like the memories you're trying to unlock are literally the story on the uh, bottom of the plane. Going back to the story idea. That's a cool idea. Yeah. The other thing that's neat about the elephant is that it's going to have the RGB colors yes. and the remote. So it lends itself to doing some sort of puzzle or trap based on the colors that it changes. It could even be a thing like if it's at there, if the players have like control over it, it can be a thing where they're switching it to different effects uh, to try and go with like whatever's happening with the flow of the battle. These, these inherently feel like a lot more, they, they feel like benevolent, right? Like they feel like they're about kind of protecting um, they might not be benevolent to the players, but I don't know that they're actively, they're definitely not evil. That's fair. They, like, they I feel like, I feel like the, I should say. Yeah, the throne, the throne one for this set, I, I forget the exact name of the piece. Chris, could you point to it? Which one? The throne. The throne. Yeah, so that one, I could see like that, because you had the miniature on it and it made me think like, this thing is a portal, this thing is a gateway. Like this thing teleports Ooh. you or sends you somewhere that you might not mean to go or that you might need to go or I, I, yeah, I definitely feel like these things are uh, maybe maybe not benevolent but but definitely like powerful and and, and representing the interests interests of ancient people that are no longer around. Actually I like the teleporting idea like if you had multiple of these on the field it could be a way to like skip across the battlefield like in an instant potentially oh that's a good idea you can makes even, like, it a good battle mechanic i'm the keen to the portals that hmm? you did nina in hmm? doom the trapdoor port portals that you did in doom oh yeah that was so long ago <laughs> <laughs> but they you could you, you could teleport to them that's true. It could have multiple exits and entrances that uses existing pieces. They're moving between two different battlefields, one set up with this stuff and one with the uh, uh, dungeon, mm. like one like in the literally Dungeon of Doom and you're having to move back and forth between the battlefields. Yeah, the portals. You're, you're going to the ancient past of the elves or the future of the elves and back to the dungeon, depending on. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. That's fascinating. One, one thing I've been wanting to do with that, that same piece is to use it um, as either a like a well, like the where the the one sort of true elixir is kept to you know to heal the king, and you're sent to find some way to save him, or to use it as like a, a scrying pool, where mm -hmm. probably in that case, everyone who looks in it will see something different. You know, you're going looking for the wisdom of the ancients, depending on who you are and maybe what they want to show you, you'll get some hints as to how to complete your quest. But it won't be just like, you know, a paint by numbers thing. It'll be a bit vague and and uh you know needing some interpretation and some some clever understanding on the part of the players because the ancient elves probably don't look at the world quite the way you do so yeah. i definitely need to go to the optometrist i'm uh nate is able to read the comments on the big tv from here and i am not 
which uh, gives a very, a very real objective measurement of my eyesight. Huh. Good Let's vision's see. overrated. <laughs> she says wearing glasses. <laughs> yeah. Um, you only see. need to see this far. That's, <laughs> That's all. Uh, Golden Poison says uh, she's thinking that the RGB aspects could be the rune's mood ring. The hero holds the soul of the runes and will change color depending on uh, how it's viewing the party's actions. So maybe like the way that they're the way they're going about things could churn the the benefits of these pieces for or against them, based on like how they align with like maybe this this civilization's code or something. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Like the mage casts a fireball that roasts the ancient elvish garden along with the enemy, and suddenly the the Statuary starts reacting against you. <laughs> God, there's a lot of really good ideas in here. Um, let's go to... Let's see, I want to wait for Artificer until Toby's here. Let's do Dwarven. Dwarven kind of feels like the most... Well, no, Elven's pretty terrain-heavy. This one definitely, like, reads as terrain. Uh, pretty firmly. Although I really like, I feel like the I feel like the hero piece could actually be a number of different things. I feel like this could be like the the, the avatar of of Moradin or something. It could be more than just a, a, a normal statue. I was thinking of it as the avatar of Moradin the entire time. Is that not what we decided? Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't feel like we've ever like well that's that's the thing right we haven't really like, really diagnosed exactly what these things are and I think it's because they were sculpted with multiple purposes in mind. Right, um, right, right. Yeah. I did give everybody the pamphlets on, on Moradin so that they could learn more about the religion. I still have it on my desk. It's very it's very useful. Does everybody watching this know who Moradin is? Are I we, hope so. Like, well, maybe not everybody. People play games differently and everything, but... Uh, you want to you wanna explain it to them? Uh, Moradin is the dwarf father. The uh, deity, the... Uh, protector of all dwarves, even the ugly ones. <laughs> sort of the ultimate, the ultimate smith and creator of things, right? Yeah. 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 Which uh, I think hopefully that makes it like fairly the, obvious. Like the Odin, the Odin of the dwarven pantheon. Which hopefully makes it fairly obvious why uh, it's a it's a god that we particularly care about here. Um, but uh, I wanted to do a build. We haven't gotten around to doing this. You know the uh, the Christ the Redeemer statue in Brazil, where it's just like this that massive Jesus statue. Like, yes. I want to yeah. I want to do a mountain build that just has him like on the mountain peak, like overlooking, uh, like a like like a settlement. Um, but that would take a lot of time to build. Uh. <laughs> I feel like we need to do a whole set of dwarven ruins. Like we've we've kept touching on it. Like we did the uh, the dwarven stuff for was that caverns deep. We did like a yeah. forge and yeah, and we did the, the and ruined version, stuff. the ruined version of the vaulted dungeons that appeared in Caverns Deep. Yeah, I feel like we could like this stuff could work great with those pieces. Hmm. Definitely. Interesting. I feel like the pillars, the dwarven pillars are like super flexible in terms of like it feels like a lot of things work on top of it. The fireworks, I feel like the raven orb works really well. Uh, you could just have it like completely like flat off and say that it's just got like got the ceiling on it uh could you like would you when you were working uh on the pillar uh did you did you think of like it's uh any kinds of applications for it outside of it being you know like your your average pillar well, uh, those were the two main applications as a, a pillar or a or plinth. Um, you know, it's it just like, it's something to either be a focus in a room to present something or it's a, a structural support, which I think makes it great for terrain. Like I'm, I'm definitely gonna use these for my uh, ancient Dwarven temple. Yeah, I feel, I feel like if you've got like a, a massive like chamber like lined with these like two rows of these like it makes a huge statement it's one i think is going to be the most useful 
just in as creating pillared a pillared hall and uh, just to any anywhere that these are placed is going to look more grand it's going to feel be... more hmm. imposing i feel like one thing that could be neat actually is with, with these being like dwarven craftsmanship and everything uh it could be a fun scenario to like say that being around these sculpts if like a if like a temple of Moradin is like under attack or something maybe followers of Moradin or something being around like this architecture that kind of embodies uh like the greatest of dwarven craftsmanship maybe they get some sort of bonus to ac or some sort of there's some sort of aura like almost like a paladin's aura that kind of takes effect for like hold, uh, followers of Moradin or maybe just dwarves Moradin's or... blessing Moradin's yeah. blessing Ups your yeah. constitution save something like that yeah. yeah. Like I, feel, I feel like that would be like the way to go is giving these like some kind of aura that comes off of them just from like the sheer like aesthetic like pleasure of it. Uh... I could definitely see a player sitting on the throne, the Griffin throne, and becoming like an avatar of Moradain and getting like temporary powers and sort of like a critical scenario. Yeah. And a beard. pointed out. Uh, and a beard, think... yes, <laughs> a spectral beard. <laughs> it's basically it basically has the effects of the uh, belt of dwarven kind. Yes, like sure. That. Yeah. Yeah. Which is one of my favorite magic items that I've been. I, I keep trying to extremely subtly draw pins to Tyler that I really want my character to to get one of those. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's totally cool. My the character I designed for the the dwarven forge, you know, our you know wilder forge group. Um, we were each allowed to have a, a rare magic item, and I basically made up a custom one that was sort of the draconic version of that. So it's got sort of a stats boost, lets you speak draconic. It's it is sort of like gra dragon scales, kind of grafted onto his flesh as a mantle, um, <laughs> and it gives you like minor benefits, like you can blow smoke rings and shoot sparks out of your nose, which you know have no real effect, but it's just like if you want to intimidate somebody, you know. Anyways, <laughs> that's sick. I think uh, Nate pointed out to me at one point that the the gold on the chest of the Griffin Throne here could be like a doorway. Uh, yeah, that was your Michelle, idea. Right? Michelle mentioned that in the meeting. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, originally I was I was trying to sculpt it more as a door, but um, because we we wanted to make it more obvious that this was a Griffin and not just an eagle or something like that, we had to put the arms in so the door had to get. A little bit smaller so now it looks a little more like the back of a throne of an actual throne that just but makes me it, feel it like a, a good way. sleight of hand check means that you can find that, that like you, you push on it. it's like oh wait this gives way and it could be like a secret and it's definitely a short dwarven sized door so. That's another thing. Well, yeah, like, this is also sized well regular minis uh can sit in it and everything but like if you have like a dwarven or a gnome mini uh it actually fits in there like really nicely uh because they're shorter uh, which feels right. <laughs> Maybe also it conceals like the warhammer that even like the king's warhammer that he kept there in case someone attacked him while he was sitting on his throne. Oh, you that's know, a good you, idea. You you, you could you, just uh, like reach behind you and pull it out. Yeah, you know, some people keep their you know their rogue's dagger under their pillow some and like maybe you pillow. can only open the door if you have the blessing of Moradin. Like you yeah. have to. Oh, that's yeah. such a good idea. Uh, Yak is wondering if we got the LED on this one fixed. We did, but the battery apparently has died on this, so I need to replace the battery. Uh, however, we did put a picture of this with the LEDs working in a Kickstarter update a couple days ago. Um, it's it's really cool. Like, there's a nice red glow that comes up and like hits his chest and the bottom of his beard, uh, and nice like piercing red eyes. It's a it, it's working really well. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like the idea of these giving like passive effects or buffs or auras, the blessing of Morty. Like the, the the idea that like genuinely like if you if you craft something beautiful enough, Mordine's like, you know, I'll help you out. Why not? I could also see the statue there being either the place you have to bring something and then the dwarf will literally forge it for you. You know, you you put <laughs> your adamantine on that anvil and then he'll forge it into a blade. Or you, you bring something you need that needs destroying, and he'll smash the hell out of it. You know, you bring some artifact of the, the orcs or whatever, and and he's the only one that can hit it hard enough to shatter it. That's how you, that's how you do the big run sword quest in your uh, mm -hmm. campaign. 
Yeah. I think Nina might be the only one who... Uh, or no, Michelle, are you familiar with uh, Zelda? Yes. Remember uh, Ocarina of Time, the uh, bigger on sword quest? Mm. It, it could be like that kind of thing. Like, this is like this long series of events that you go through to try and make this like incredible weapon, and that's like the final step. Uh, yeah. Or he's the he's the horrid shop teacher that um, critiques your your work. <laughs> if he doesn't like it, he smashes it. Somebody earlier was saying that they actually would like to see the sculpts like animate themselves to defend a place too, which uh, yeah, the dwarven, the dwarven hero that. animating would be sick. We need to do another one in a battle pose. Somebody yeah. somebody was asking before if we could make it where if, if we could make it so that his arm could come down and like hit things and i was like oh what we should do is we should make it where you can pull down on the arm and it comes down and then his mouth opens up and a pez comes out um... <laughs> you know one of the original dwarven designs i did which fell by the wayside somewhere was um you know everyone has dice jails i wanted to do a dice punisher and it was kind of like a throne looking thing but basically it had this like giant war hammer it was like a dragon's head but it also functioned as a war hammer, and I, I wanted to have it hinged so that um, part of the idea was it was something the dwarves would literally use as an execution device instead of a, a guillotine. They would have you go stand there, and the hammer would smack you. But you could also, like if your die kept rolling once, you'd put it in there, and you could whack it. Um, yeah. <laughs> one of these days. Maybe I'll make one of those. It's pretty sick. Um, so the elemental family. This one definitely reads as spell effects slash creatures, right? Mm. definitely I, I really I love water weirds I feel like water weirds are underutilized and I was really happy when I saw this because I was like oh man this like it's such a good representation of a water weird because it does just feel like literally some sort of creature made out of a moving liquid that has no like actual form I feel like this set is, is honestly the most obviously useful in games like it's like, it's very clear what elemental stuff could do. Yeah. Like, it could be a, a, a symbol of your power, it could be a creature, it could be a trap. There's so many applications for these. Yeah. They're like, the, the, the phoenix is, like, absolutely, like, this is, again, something that, like, could be an avatar of a god or could be some sort of magic, like, massive summoned creature or could just be a literal phoenix uh, I think we, like, it, it definitely is the sort of thing that, like, it could be against you depending on what your party does, but it also could aid you in a different scenario. Yeah. It's got its own, like, code, its own morality that yeah. might not align with the parties necessarily. Well, I mean, there is an Elder Elemental Phoenix in, um, I can't remember if it's Bolo's Guide or Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, but one of those, there's a, you know, there's a very powerful Phoenix creature that that would be perfect for, um. But yeah, I think I think it would also be a fun spell thing where you get to sort of you know summon a, a firebird thing that zips around the battlefield for a few turns, roasting your enemies, or or maybe it can like carry you through the air, but only if you're resistant to fire damage because otherwise. <laughs> there's gonna be at least one. There's gonna be at least one cleric that's gonna try and convince their uh, their DM that this is their spiritual weapon, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or well, maybe maybe if it's like a fire, uh, say a cleric of the forge or something, and they roll a successful divine intervention, their god's like, all right, have a phoenix for a few minutes, you know, knock yourself out, roast some things. Also, a fun thing is these all can take a mini on them, so you could be like, I had like a I have like a water genasi uh, in my in my room that I, I like putting on the water weird and acting like she's doing some avatar stuff uh, with the water. Um, I feel like if you put like a necromancer on something on this and they're like literally float like flying on a pillar of like necrotic energy. Uh, yeah. A lot of really cool stuff. Yeah, I like, I mean, I think the, um, the energy helix too is a fun one because it can definitely be a necromancer or it could be some sort of like, you know, kind of bipolar god of, you know, darkness and light or judgment or whatever where depending on what mood they're in, they'll, you know, either give you the light side or the dark side. Um, you know, if you if you approach uh, too closely, or you know, if they just manifest to express their opinion about something, um, <laughs> so it's it's not you know it it might be evil or it might be you know it might be that balance. Um, 
between dark and light. That could be a really <laughs> fun. You wind up on like the elemental planes, and like these are just like literally the forms that they can perceive like these elemental beings as. Like they can't mm -hmm. really comprehend. Uh, fascinating. Now that I think I'm about sure it, just if the uh, anchor magnets will be enough to to hold the sploosh on the wall on one of the magnetic walls. Oh, oh so, so it could go on. sideways. Yeah, uh -huh. that could be cool. I like a great I trap. That. Do any of these? Do any of our prototypes have magnets in them yet? Uh, yeah, a water version of that fire burst that I did for the. Yeah. It looks like. It looks like he hasn't modded magnets into the bottom of any of our water prototypes yet, but I'd wager this is one of the lighter sculpts that we have. This is one of the lightest ones, so I think the magnet, if it's gonna hold any of them sideways, it should hold this one pretty well. Because we were testing, what did we test it with? One of these that had a magnet on them, we put the, the base up like literally 90 degrees, and one of the pieces uh -huh. didn't fall out. I think it was one of the dwarven pieces. Uh, I think the heroes definitely won't hold that well because they're, yeah. they're big. But some of the smaller sculpts, and I think this one especially, because it's it's fairly bottom heavy and it's not that heavy of a sculpt compared to the others. You could absolutely put that one on the wall, I would wager. Just with the way that it forms, it looks like it's hitting someone, you know. Yeah, like it's kind of splashing around if you put the miniature. Yes, you can literally exactly. put it like this and just have them trapped. You could, you could have them like literally like freeze it around them. Like you could say this water has now been like it, it wraps around them and then freezes. That's another one that you could totally turn into uh, one of the many ooze creatures with an alternate paint scheme too, if you wanted. Yeah, so, he's a little. Like common ogre jelly or a black pudding or whatever. <clears throat> uh, Kiwi Mischief was saying that Orkira uh, needs this phoenix, which uh, Lauren herself actually said uh, on Twitter. She plays Orkira on uh, Heroes of the Plains. And uh, I, I think she literally serves like a god that's represented by a phoenix and so she was like huh this could this could like literally actually be extremely useful sweet uh, shout out to lauren she's been very helpful and enthusiastic about uh helping uh helping with all this um it's been it's been really nice to get to work with her what we've got i think this is actually the one if this had to represent any particular spell or spell effect, what would this one be? What would the helix be for you? Oh, gee. Uh, I mean, it, it's certainly, you know, some of the, like, the black tentacle spells or something where you want to create an area that's uh, dark and weird terrain and anyone goes in there, stuff's going to happen to them. Um, That's a possibility. Um, I mean, I think depending on the flavor of your spell caster, some of the just like kind of whirlwind spells and so on. I mean, if you've got a warlock or, you know, just somebody who's not, you know, not kind of a, a pure bright air kind of person, but someone has a little more darkness and, and, and they create, you know, some kind of a whirlwind or a tornado effect, um, I think that would be great for that. Um, I definitely like the idea of it being kind of an, an unleashed uh, tornado, an arcane tornado of sorts. Uh, that you know, it, it might be a trap or a, a triggered spell, something that's left a glyph somewhere. And, you know, awesome. I want to demo. Sure. Oh, I want to oh, demo one thing real quick. Uh, Kiwi yep. was asking if you can buy magnets to add to these. These actually are all going to have magnets. Uh, it's just these are prototypes that we cast in house, and so not all of them have magnets. Uh, some of them, Miles has. Uh, drilled out and put magnets on like this one has a magnet on it so all of the actual finished pieces will have magnets on the bottom uh to hold them to terrain trays so this one yeah i guess actually there's an demo right there this is heavier than the water weird is and it's going sideways just fine so uh cool. yeah i think i think the thrones and probably some of the pedestals would be able to go sideways without falling um, oh hey Chris, just wanted that? to mention we ought to do a giveaway. Yes, actually let's let's do the giveaway right now, and then uh, we'll come back and do artificer because I think uh, Nina also has to go. So let's let's run the giveaway while we do that. I'll get the uh, I'll get the overlay set up while we're doing the giveaway, and then we will do artificer and uh, take any quick questions people have and call it a stream. 
Someone in the chat said something really interesting um, that the the helix looks like a spell effect that would appear right before the radiant horror arrives. That's oh yeah, that's, 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 a that's good idea. Sick, actually, I that's thought that was synergy. a really good idea, and it would like be great to, like different ways to like cross over. Like because we're thinking of them all in just like the little three group things, but I'm sure there's like a lot of interesting crossover if we started thinking about it that way. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, all right. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a giveaway real quick. Um, let's go to this cam. Uh, all right, so if you want to, oh, well, I should be. One moment. Hi. Uh, we're gonna do a giveaway real quick. Uh, can anybody think of a, uh, what's, what's a good word for the giveaway right now? Terrain. Terrain? Or has what? that already been used? I mean. I mean, it's why a good, not? A good idea. That's, if we didn't use it already. That's what we're all about. Uh, all right. Uh, terrain is the keyword. If you want a chance to win uh, $50 of Pledge Manager credit for uh, for the Reliquaries Kickstarter, uh, go ahead and just type terrain in chat. It's not case sensitive. You can use it in a sentence. As long as the word terrain appears uh, in a chat message from you, uh, you will be entered into the giveaway. Um, all right. Let's see. So are we going to say goodbye to Nina since she's got to run? Yeah. Let's go ahead and... Bye, everybody. Bye, Nina. Thanks for... Bye, Nina. Bye, Nina. Thanks for joining us. Have fun. Bye. Bye. All right. And then I'm going to really quickly... I hope this works the way that it's supposed to work. Uh... I see two parts of Michelle on <laughs> two different yep. windows now. <laughs> hey, look at that. I tried to set this up. A very specific way from the beginning to to, to function this way, and it did. Uh, yeah. So uh, go ahead and do that. We'll talk for a little bit. Not quite crisp, but pretty good. I'm I've tried. Uh, I'm all alone today. Black air elemental from the shadow realm. There's a lot of cool things you can do with it. Are there any questions I missed while I was over there? Oh, people were talking about how um, the elemental stuff like looks like it's moving, which was the entire purpose. Like a lot of the other pieces, like you can tell yeah. like these these are like literally like in world sculpted solid things. Uh, but elemental, like the whole challenge was getting it to feel like it's moving even though it's a stationary object. Um, yeah. We talked about that a fair bit on the elemental deep dive, but um that that was one thing I I, I love doing uh pieces that are energy, that are fire, that are water, that are things in movement. Um and one of the really fun things about working on this project was the contrast between working on elemental and working on artificer, which are kind of the, the polar opposites. One is pure energy and motion. The other is very carefully crafted, symmetrical, hand wrought, hard edged, you know, solid steel, bronze, iron stuff. Yeah. Uh, rigid to, to inorganic completely and totally inorganic yeah but to the point of um cross-pollinating i do like the idea not only of the helix being a spell effect right before the eldritch horror appears or the uh radiant horror but i can imagine some of the artificer things when they're triggered summoning or creating some of these effects um we can get into that I, in a Yeah, like there's a lot of like even like today like on this stream it's like oh yeah I've thought of it like we've come across a couple different ways to combine these pieces that I hadn't thought of before a couple uses which is why we're doing the stream right is like yeah, yeah. getting all those ideas going because like you know we spend months we spend months looking at these pieces and uh, there's still stuff that we don't even think about until after we've shipped it we'll see somebody do a build with stuff that we sculpted like two years ago. And they'll use it in a way that we never thought of. And it's just a really cool thing to see. Yeah. I, I love the way one creative idea can trigger other creative ideas and other people. And it's just kind of this cascade of, you know, each bit of artistry leads to a different kind of, uh, different kind of creation. It just keeps on going and, you know, hopefully it inspires the players to, you know, or the, the children of the DMs or whatever to then carry that on down the line. Right. Because that's like... Uh, that's like one of the things we really like hope for here, right? Is like some to have some kind of like legacy with these pieces. That's why we build them to like not break. They're made out of dwarven ice, so they'll be like super 
sturdy and like unless your dog or a saw gets to it it's probably going to be it's probably going to last for decades so just yeah. like to be a thing and we see all these photos of people like letting their kids build and like like oh my eight-year-old thought of thought of this last night and stuff like that and like all those pictures it's a, it's a really cool uh, uh, extra credits did a video in collaboration with us um a couple months ago where they talked about how uh it's fascinating that we're not just like designing a product we're like designing a tool set like it's not just us making a thing and then going like here this is what this is it's we make all these pieces and some of it is like here's what we thought of to do with it but also we made this modular we made it in a way where like you can play around with it and find stuff that we never even thought of and like we're really kind of handing them like a tool set um yeah it's it's interesting like he, he compared it to like designing like a, a game engine as opposed to making like the game itself um which i think is i think is pretty apt yeah um, and, and one thing about these pieces which i think we're exploring right now is these aren't specifically modular because you know there's just a small set of things but we did definitely design them all so that they have multiple uses so that they can be interpreted in different interesting ways that are sometimes you know contradictory it's a destroyer or, or a creator or a you know a trap or a protector or whatever the case may be um and yeah and you know it's just you're only limited by your imagination really i always love seeing the fan builds of stuff when they they've used something that we didn't even think of uh as being a use for some of the pieces that one cathedral uh mm, the, yeah, the cathedral yeah, that build great. where that. Yeah, that, that one blew my mind. Who was that Forge twenty twenty on the forums, I think it was? They made uh yeah, they made a cathedral, like we never made cathedral pieces, but they took like castle stuff and uh and city builder stuff and everything and they used like the castle walls like on their side to make like a dome roof uh style thing and they put terrain they they uh magnetized terrain trays to the side of the cart it was on to put burrows that are like a tunnel underneath the the caverns it was one of the wildest things it, like people are so infinitely creative with these pieces it's it's really wild and like and like even now like people in chat coming up with ideas that we never thought of and they've been looking at it for a lot less a lot less time than we have but it's just the fact that everybody's mind comes from different places and it is influenced by different things and has different experiences so different stuff pops up pops into everybody's head when they see the same thing um it's really cool masticon saying he can't imagine having all these pieces in resin because they'd be broken by now uh but with dwarven <laughs> he can let anyone use it and yeah that's part of the you know there's there's positives and negatives to everything um resin like you know can hold finer detail but in exchange for that it's it's a lot more brittle um which i think like yeah like when we went from because when you sculpt for resin you get to do different things than when you're sculpting for dwarvenite yeah like you have to like keep yeah, certain things in mind some, yeah there's something i mean you can get away with a little more in the way of undercuts and and uh you know stuff that will work with a with a silicone mold and not yeah you know, with a injection process uh, I want to bring up a cool idea that Glamour Moth had, saying uh, they were thinking that the water sploosh uh, in the Elven Heroes uh, orb could be a contained ball of water that turns into the elemental sploosh when deactivated or, or uh, angered. So, like, the elemental sculpts could literally be, like, a defense mechanism for the Elven sculpts, which is kind of fun to think about, because I think you can tie, I think you can tie, like, elemental magics to elves pretty easily. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, from a lore standpoint. Um Let's uh, and let's roll this giveaway and then get into Artificer and uh, take some closing questions and that should be all of it. All right, and Paul Hostetler has won. Congratulations! Congratulations! Yeah, let's get congratulations, Paul. Congratulations. Uh, I feel like I have your email from a past thing already. I believe you won. Yeah, during the anniversary week, right? Uh, yep, there you are. I believe I already have it. Okay, awesome. Yes, we do have it. Uh, I think. Oh no, we don't. Okay, I'll need to get it from you. Um, right. I got it. I got your wife's. That's what it was. Uh, all right. Uh. 
gonna just DM, uh, send you a whisper on Twitch real quick. Uh, I just need your Kickstarter email so that we can apply the credit to your account when the pledge manager goes up, and that should be everything. Um, Fedior says, really wish you guys had an online map system using those tiles. So do we, uh, unfortunately. We're many things. We are not web developers. It would have to be something, we'd have to get somebody else to do all the lifting for that uh, for us, which we have kind of, we're collaborating with this uh, company called Mirscape. If you look it up, I think they're launching in January and they have kind of a system like that. It's a, it's a digital map building thing where you buy like packs of pieces and then can like lay them out. Uh, if you look up Mirscape, that might be what you're looking for. Uh, I would love if we were. I would love if we had the resources to just have like a software development team. Uh, but all right, let's get over to the pieces and pull out Artificer. All right. All right. Oh, oh! I almost broke the Eldritch with the Elemental. <laughs> it's fine. Nothing broke. <laughs> I just didn't. I did. I didn't. I thought I had enough room. I didn't. I'm actually incredibly proud of us for how little we've uh, broken sculpts in this Kickstarter because uh, a lot of these, you know, especially like artificer pieces, like the only thing we've had is a couple of these spider arms have popped off in, in transit, basically, which, you know, it's a quick like super glue to get them back on. But uh, we, we've actually done very well with not breaking our precious sculpts this time around. You guys uh, made me, the, the whole film crew made me nervous when you guys are out at our place <laughs> we yeah I, some shots. I give it yeah cause, so uh for those of you who don't know uh pretty much every one of those shots of the uh of the pieces like on a fireplace mantle or uh, like that table in front of the fireplace that really nice uh shot there that was like all taken at chuck and michelle's like gorgeous house uh because <laughs> the rest of us live in brooklyn and we don't have anything close to resembling uh, a fireplace or furniture. So uh, we uh, <laughs> we ran out there and like all of those shots we got in like f a four hour shooting period basically where uh, all, all four of us on the film team went over there. We were running like two different camera setups at any given time and like, okay, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go here, including shooting some stuff for like Elemental and Elven outside and stuff like that. It was a, it was a whirlwind and we didn't break anything. Uh, didn't one, of, one of the one of the spider arms came off in the box on the way over, and that was it. It's proud of us. Um, okay. And I was nervous the whole time. Every time we had to move move a whole set on one of the bases, <laughs> I every, was nervous. Every time during Wildlands that we made a massive mountain build and we're stacking all these escarpments on top of each other, and we've got like fifteen wyvern stones hanging off of rods above the like. I was so worried. I was like, this feels like there's a horrible domino effect waiting to happen that would wipe out like a solid <laughs> week's worth of painting. Um, it was, yeah, it was, uh, the prototypes make me extremely nervous because we got, we get so used to like using like the Dwarvenite stuff once it's actually finished. Like, I don't care. I'll, I'll do that and I don't care. But like every time, yeah, every time I'm like moving any of these prototypes around, I feel like I'm like holding a baby. Um, and I just get like that. I don't know if anybody else gets like that anxiety over like anytime somebody like has like a newborn child and they're like, oh, you want to hold them? I'm like, I, I don't want to. <laughs> not because not, not I don't like your baby. I'm just like terrified for some reason that I'm going to like hurt them. Uh, but yeah, I always get those vibes. Artificer. Uh, yes. These are a, a pretty new direction for us. Uh, we've never done anything like this before outside of like stuff like the planar pylon. You know, we've had like a couple pieces that it, you could maybe say have kind of similar vibes. Um, but this is our first time like really going full into like just a bunch of f fantasy tech, basically. Um, and yeah. so obviously none of these are like living creatures, maybe. <laughs> Unless somebody has ideas I don't know about. Uh, but I think that they all have a myriad of different uses. Um, and a lot of that is thanks to the work that Toby and Eli did with putting a lot of like little no notches on there, not notches, but like a lot of little touches on there um, 
stuff like the exposed uh, exposed machinery inside, stuff like the scope on the side of this, just like a lot of small things that you could justify, like if a player makes a perception check or something, like, yeah, you see that this is here, and this is probably a thing that you can manipulate and interact with to make the machine do something weird. Um, so, let's have at it. This is probably going to be the most complicated out of all of them. What can these do? <laughs> I mean, I certainly felt like one thing that was really fun about them is that they can be used in a ton of ways. Like the furnace portal, um, I could imagine that as a, a teleporter portal type of thing, as something that's primarily designed for smelting things down, either to destroy them or to extract their magic. Something where perhaps you have to bring an evil magic item that if you destroyed it anywhere else, it would release a burst of you know horrible necrotic energy. But if you put it in this thing specifically, the the arms in and the you know the arcane runes upon them will focus it all contain it and perhaps transport it to the far realm just get it the heck out of here so you know that that evil will never threaten the world again um it can be uh you know some kind of a, a mind control device if, you, if you're put up on you know you put your mini on top of that um and then trigger the trigger the controls and it concentrates energy so even the even the most powerful um mind shield spell will get broken down and you can learn everything that that creature knows i, I could certainly see that being something maybe the illithids would use in that case um it could be uh it could be a summoning you know a summoning mechanism for for either spell effects like you know, the Phoenix or the, the energy helix or for, you know, just any creature you want to, it's something that literally plucks a thing from another plane and brings it here. Um, I'm not putting the it, Phoenix on there. The <laughs> yeah, that probably, you know, probably it's going to fly off immediately anyways, but that's pretty cool that that, that, that fits there. Um, I actually really like, and part of it is that to, uh, to make it uh, stay together with the prototypes, we put a little base uh, on the bottom of the helix, just keep it in place. Uh, the final will not need that, uh, yeah. but the prototypes do. But it actually makes it fit super nicely over this. Well, I mean, it will be flat on the bottom, so it will be. Yes, yeah. uh, it's just like because there's like little ridges on this base, so it's making it like slot really right. nicely. But it will, it'll actually fit better on the furnace portal because it'll have. Cause right now, that these lips, uh, the lips on the base, are actually kind of like throwing it off kilter a bit. But when this is like right. completely flat on the bottom in the final, it'll sit more nicely on top of this. Well, yeah, and I mean that's here. that's cool. That's a really interesting. Uh, whatever's going on there, you know, it's momentous. <laughs> yeah, like like this yeah. like this machine has been put on the fritz. It's generating something, and like mm -hmm. this could have some sort of uh, AOE effect on anybody that approaches it. But you have to like get close to fix the machine or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can definitely see that being a machine that is sort of sentient, or that at least is covered with reactive glyphs or other protective mechanisms. So, or for example, there's a ladder on the back that you can climb up, right? But maybe that is, uh, you know, the, the defense shields have been turned on. So whenever anyone that tries to climb that immediately is hit with some lightning damage. And so unless you have resistance to lightning damage, you know, you're going to have trouble going up that ladder. So maybe you can climb it normally if you're willing to take the damage or otherwise you have to make an acrobatics check to just crawl up the outside of it. You know, if your rogue wants to just try and scale the front of it. Um, I like the idea that the tank on the side could be condensing something important that you're extracting. And maybe there's a, like, there's a little tap and you can, you know, you can drain it out and have a keg full of pure arcane essence or, you know, spirit beer or however you want um, to, to think of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, with the artifact on top, that you know that that egg is sort of. Uh, I mean, it, it's maybe something that's that you need to open. Maybe it's a puzzle, you know, to to get at that energy that's been concentrated in there. Maybe it's some sort of a like arcane gnomish warhead that the portal is going to literally launch at the enemies of the realm or blast into another dimension. Um, maybe it's going to hatch and and you know some kind of warforged. Um, creature is going to come out of there. Um, uh, Merc yeah. was wondering uh, if the heroes fit on a 2x2, two two, and yeah, they pretty much fit exactly a 2x2 two two square grid. Uh, the base does. It's 50 millimeters. Yeah. It comes out, it's pretty much, yeah, it's pretty much like perfectly fitting inside this 2x2. Two two. Yeah, it's, it's essentially, it's two inches uh, across, so. 
Another thing, uh, I have an inkling. I think the paint scheme on the Raven Orb actually works really well for these two. It, mm. it matches with the hero really well. Yeah, because of the gold and, and dark. Yeah. How's it looking here? Another another element of that, because it was originally sort of inspired by orreries, um, and there are those sort of uh, spherical elements to the arms, I think it may well be something where its powers depend on the alignments of the stars, the heavenly spheres, the interaction of the planes as they orbit around the central prime material, whatever the case may be. Um, and you can definitely use that as something where this thing only wakes up once every 399 and a half years or whatever the case, you know, um, or you have to wait until the full moon to use it, or it can even affect time because it has this cosmic relationship with the, the larger universe. Um, Some, somebody's um, overloaded the machine and like blown it up internally and now it's just like fire like coming out of it yeah yeah so now you get to get out there and put it put it out before it burns through and releases yeah yeah i'm surprised nobody has mentioned that it it, it kind of looks like uh, an evolved dalek oh uh, a whole running gag on the discord has been calling this the arcane or the disco dalek or dalek sorry there's um it's gonna be a long explanation there's a if you're familiar with cinema sins there's yeah. uh there's a video of somebody going through and just like pointing out like a bunch of weird things and uh mistakes in cinema sins videos and one of them was uh they called uh daleks daleks and because of that now i call them daleks sometimes and it's really unfortunate uh <laughs> but yeah no the raven orb like fits really well with all these I think. I actually uh, the th this the the Enigma Spider like. I love the idea. We've had people say like, it'd be a really cool like mobility device. Like you could say this hmm. thing is like being piloted and moved around by somebody in it. Um, yeah. It could also be like a torture device or a trap. Uh, it could be something to to probe somebody. They they could get in there and then like the claws come in and like lock them in. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with it, but this definitely feels like something that you want to put a mini inside. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad Toby's not here to talk about that one because that was that was his uh, creation primarily. Yeah. It, it's, it's really, it's another really fun one that way. And another thing, I can imagine there being an, an elder brain um, that, you know, crawls that crawls out of its, its pool and uses that to move around the illicit lair. Um, there's some other kind of, you know, generally immobile creature that spiders up and goes hunting <laughs> i could also see it taking things apart we were talking mm. about that with the dwarf those manipulative arms look like something that would yeah could put something together or take something apart um raven search players or magic devices <laughs> Uh, Merck was asking if the ravens were also pole accessories. The raven orbs come with both the orb and the raven, yeah? Like, that's why they were called the raven orbs? Yes, and the raven is a pole accessory that fits on top of the orb, I believe. Right. It's yeah. They're two separate. It just worked out that it would be better when we finally made them, that it would... It just made sense to, to make them both pole accessories. You can put the raven in... Uh, without the orb yeah i was always curious like why what was the thought process behind like we need to put a raven on this orb it was originally supposed to be the uh, a raven um and it was supposed to be sitting on something and the orb just worked out as the best thing um they were to go they had originally been designed to go on the elevation blocks, those um, in Dungeon of Doom. And the first actual first Raven was had open wings, but I couldn't get it to look quite right. We should have had Eli do it. <laughs> I kind of like him having closed wings. It's very menacing. Like he's not budging. He's just staring at you like you're the one who's in the wrong place. Yeah, it's there to contribute to Bo's madness or something. 
So croaking evermore. Yeah. We talked about this a bit uh, in the Artificer deep dive. Uh, I never thought about this potentially being a weapon. The uh, I can't remember what the name for this one is. Uh, the Power Stone Charger. Yes. Uh, but the, like somebody pointed out the scope here. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at it, it's like, oh yeah, the scope could be like for sighting. I was looking at this as like some kind of like advanced technological mortar system. Uh, yeah. Which is wild. Uh, is that what you initially had in mind when you were sculpting it? Well, I mean, when I, I added the scope, Aaron had suggested that it would be cool to have the arms be not quite symmetrical. So I thought, well, what can I put on one? I'll put a scope on. I'll, so you can either... I mean, basically, again, it's something that has multiple possible uses. One is just to align the arms correctly, since you know they're they're jointed, so theoretically they can move around a bit. So maybe you need to either have the two pieces of wyvernium in there slightly different distances apart, as they're worn down by the arcane process of generating this. You need to you know put them closer together, further apart, or maybe you're just sighting the arms. So you you need to again you need to wait till the full moon appears through the hole in the top of the temple, and then. You know, when you're pointed exactly at that, then you trigger this thing to absorb the moonlight. But another thing you might use it for is, yeah, for taking aim. So this is for, you know, blasting the ancient dragon when it when it appears at the top of the, you know, the top of the cavern or whatever the case might be. Yeah, it's it's de- it's definitely one of the things you can do with that is uh, is just launch it at something. That's, that's sick. That's using sick. it using it as like a defense during a siege or something. Dragon flying overhead, yeah. and that's specifically like, a like a home brewed like object that you can have players interact with. Yeah, I also definitely like the idea of there, since there are those those glowing crystals there, which are maybe like activated wyvernium, since they're you know they're I, I sculpted them with wyvernium textures, but the idea is they're you know they're brighter, they they have that glow, and that's probably because they're supercharged with something. So. If this is, you know, if this is perhaps a weapon that's been set to go off at a certain point by evil characters, maybe your PC has to disarm this somehow, and it's either going to be like a tinkering or a thieves' tools check to to get one of those crystals out of there before it can trigger. And if you screw up, then there's going to be a massive blast of force damage, something like that. Um, you know, you you have to decide like how do you how do you interact with this thing to to not cause it to explode. So. You just pull the hose. You know, is it gonna is it gonna fill the room with acid because you know that's that's what's in that little tank there? Is it going? You know, if you if you just change how it's aimed, you know, maybe you'll just blast the the roof off the temple, but not actually destroying the or destroy any lives. Um, who knows? But um, I, I I like putting all all those possibilities in there. You know, I feel like somebody is definitely oh. I feel like somebody is definitely going to make a really cool airship encounter. Hmm. Yeah. Like you could just load and, an and airship. That could up either with all like stuff. charge the power core for your airship or blast it out of the sky, depending on. Like I mean, you could yeah. use you could use all of these for for airships. Even the throne, you could literally. Oh. You could literally have this be like. That's where the gunner sits, and like. Mm-hmm. These like lock yeah, in. Yeah, put it like, put it on an airship. Yeah, put it on an airship as, as yeah. the as the seat for the gunner or or the captain for that matter. Um, or it even has a you know a sort of rocket bottom and it, it flies through the air or hovers. It's a know. drone. Like you make like these spider drones. Yeah. <laughs> That's excellent. You've got the, all of those arms make mental and physical connections so that you you're directly controlling the ship with your brain. Hmm. It's painful, but it's the most effective way to establish that that connection. Instant, instant psychic command of the ship. You ships, can yeah. use it in in battles. You can use the your own decks for uh, your own agility for maneuvering, or you hmm. get that bonus yeah. for maneuvering. That's really sweet. yeah. That's a cool idea. Yeah. Um, so we definitely get, we definitely have to make this this stat book uh, and just get this stuff in there. This is like a lot of really cool ideas. I feel like we have to do it. Um, does anybody have any requests or questions or anything before we head out? Uh, anything that you want to see us uh, try out or combine? Anything of that nature? These are gnome creations, you're sure? 
Gnome or Goblin uh, are generally the artificer classes people play, right? Which I find very fun, just the idea that, like, I guess if you're, I guess if you're that small, it's easier to, like, get into tight places and fix gears and such, but... Like, the, the gnome artificer, or the, the goblin artificer, I've seen so many people play by this point. Goliath artificer, please. Well, it's easier to pick up those big honking pieces of metal and crank those huge wrenches around. How much yeah. space <laughs> How much space between the two crystals on the charger? Enough to lay your mini in it sideways. Um... Oh, so that's another use. Maybe you slowly, maybe it's a really evil torture device where you slowly crush your mini between the two. <laughs> yeah, if you ever that's if you ever want to do this for some reason, uh, you can. I hope that's the I hope that's the magic bullet that makes everybody like want to buy like twenty of those. It's the idea that they can just put the entire party in between those crystals. You never know what it's gonna be, right? Yeah. Well, that's another fun one that probably go on a wall. Mm, yeah. With the anchor magnets. I can imagine um, the space where the insert goes into as where the is the muzzle of the weapon. Mm -hmm. Can you put a venom? Oh, yeah. man, I don't know if I can find all these things. A venom spitter from the Savage Gorge Adventure Pack on a sploosh. A Greek fire projector on an artificer throne. And a Doom Roller on an Eldritch Column. Oh yeah, the Doom Roller. That's the that's the Indiana Jones rock, right? Yeah, the huge. Well, yeah, the Doom Roller is the one that I did with all the demon faces all around it. But you, you either of the rocks would be, you know, there's the there's the one that just has uh, some runes on it, and then there's like the one that's literally alive, evil spirits. I might need to do those off stream because those are all. Those are all not standard pieces, so they might take a little bit of digging to find. I don't think they're going to be super accessible in the archives. Um, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, a lot of that stuff I'm going to have to put in... Uh, I'll take those photos off stream. A lot of people have been asking me to take like weird photos. I took some... Uh, I, I post a lot of them in the Discord, so if you want to see... Uh, if you want to see those photos, uh, hang out in the Discord, and I'll, I'll put them in there. Uh, I recently put the Shimmer Frond on some of the Elven stuff, because somebody's talking about how they look like plant holders to them. Uh, so we thought it'd be fun. Uh, I think you can actually fit... Maybe you can throw a few of those in uh, one of the updates, you know, if you get some good ones. The Wolfsbane fits really well over all of these insert holes, uh, which uh, Toby discovered, and he used that in an Elven... Uh, build, but you can probably do that with a couple other things too. Um, anyway, let's uh, go back over to the computer. Let me just wrap this up. Oh. Hello. Uh, let's see. All afternoon, I've been looking through the back catalog for cool things to see on reliquaries. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's the thing. We have literally hundreds of pieces. Uh, so I'm sure that there are combinations that look really cool that we're not going to think of before these ship out and people are going to discover them and we're going to kick ourselves for not thinking of them. Uh, but that's just kind of the reality of having 25 years worth of hundreds of pieces. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. It's 420. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's call it. My throat's starting to hurt a little bit. It's been a week. <laughs> Um, thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Thanks for giving us your ideas, your reactions, questions. Um, tomorrow, we're going to have Stefan on stream. I th think it's at 6 Eastern. Uh, That's what the just is. I think it's at 6, yeah. Um, I should probably just have like a cheat sheet at my desk at this point, but I didn't think about it. Um, we have Stefan on stream tomorrow. He's the founder of the company. Uh We'll be talking about, it's, it's our 25th anniversary, I should say. This is the 25th year of the company, uh, which it has kind of flavored uh, a lot of the stuff we've been doing. We've been doing a lot of retrospectives and a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of just like cool little stuff. Like this is a, this is a big year for us. Uh, so he'll be on tomorrow to talk about that. Uh, Monday night, we have, or no, not Monday night, Monday afternoon, 
we're going to have the painters on and we're going to uh, talk about uh, some painting stuff. Uh, so that should be fun. And then I believe Tuesday night we have Mustangs Art, uh, Jake Stormon, and Matthew Lillard uh, on stream to talk about uh, the way that different fantasy media kind of influences each other. Um, there's a whole, there's a, we're streaming every day during this Kickstarter, uh, sometimes multiple times a day. Uh, and we're heading into the last week now, so should be fun. We have like a lot of, we have like a lot of really fun guests planned for the final week. And it's going to be great. Thank you guys for watching. And, uh, thank you guys. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye. Oh, it's a cat. Yeah. Nice. Bye everybody. Dougie, I do it. Dougie's great. Bye.